So 2019 is coming to an end. It's over guys. It is all over. Are we going to miss this year? Probably not. But are we going to say new year, new me during December? And then once January comes around, we're going to lose all that motivation? Probably so. Anyway, so today I'm back with another episode of coding your own games is easier than you think. Because I'm going to make sure that you don't lose that motivation that you gained during December. That's right, I'm actually here to save 2020 before it even begins, so make sure to subscribe. <laughs> so in this video, I've gathered many tips and tricks that I found super useful in becoming a game developer, and I basically, you can see this video as a compilation of many of the most important lessons that I've learned throughout my journey or career, I guess you can say now. Now, um, as a game developer. I think I can start this video off with a little introduction of myself so you know about my background but most importantly you know who you're listening to. <laughs> my name is Sam and I run this YouTube channel called Saiku. On this channel I teach about game development and how to make games especially using Unity and I say especially because I also make very specific tutorials in regards to Unity. But on top of that I also do some more generalized and broad topics in game development in general such as this one where we talk about how to become a game developer in 2020. On top of that, that, I also work for Unity Technologies as their online evangelist, which basically means that I create online content for Unity, such as YouTube videos. So I guess you can say that I am pretty much in the center of game development. I also want to say a quick thank you to Game Master Audio for sponsoring today's video. Game Master Audio is a publisher on the Unity Asset Store who makes professional sound effects at affordable prices. These effects are specially designed for games by award-winning sound designers. No matter if you're a programmer, writer, or designer, I think it's really important for you to allocate your time onto putting it where you're actually specialized when you make games. And this is where the Pro Sound Collection Pack comes in. This is a pack of total 8,076 game-ready sound effects. That is three hours and nine minutes of high-quality audio effects ready for your games, which is insane. The reason I'm happy about this sponsorship on top of it being sponsored is the fact that I've actually used some of the other asset packs from Game Master Audio and I know the product quality and I can actually stand behind it on top of it being sponsored and be like, yep, this is something that I've used and vouch for it. So please make sure to check out Game Master Audio and the Pro Sound Quality Asset Pack through the links in the description. Don't forget that when you check out a sponsor, it helps them, but it also helps us on this channel to get more sponsors for our videos, which means better quality in content so basically when you check out a sponsor it helps them and this channel and it supports us so thank you game master audio for sponsoring this video and thank you for checking out game master audio and the pro sound collection pack now a quick disclaimer this video is going to be a commentary video as you can probably already tell so sit back relax chill out grab some popcorn get some soda and maybe some smart abroad and let's just jump into it now first topic of today is something that you guys are going to be very hyped about and i'm going to ruin that hype working from home oh my god all right, all right, you can stop, stop, god damn it. I'm actually not here to promote working from home. I know, <laughs> blew me all you want, I'm not here to promote it. I think working from home is really one of those things where you think it's gonna be the most awesome thing in the world, just the thing, <laughs> but then it actually starts losing its shine once you start doing it. The reason you like it to begin with is because usually after school you're used to having a strict schedule and then if you do it after having a full-time job, you're also normally used to have a strict schedule there, like work hours, 9 to 5, whatnot. And then you start working from home and then you can decide your own design for the office and pick your work hours set a schedule for yourself, let people know when you're gonna work or don't let them know, <laughs> it's up to you. And it just feels awesome because you're the boss there. I worked from home for four months in a row right after graduating from high school, which absolutely rocked. Then after those four months, I decided to get a full-time job because, you know, YouTube, I was doing YouTube during those four months and it wasn't really generating any money. So I needed to, after high school, you know, you wanna earn some money, help support the family, what. Not. So I got a job as a phone salesman and then I realized how much of a time it took for me to get used to that strict schedule format once again. And I quit from that job, not because I wasn't, you know, getting used to it or whatever. It was not a problem. The problem that I had was I just didn't like working as a phone salesman. So I went back for six months this time working remote from home on my own project, including YouTube. And oh my God, did it suck. I know, changing vibe, but... 
hear me out on this. <laughs> I realized that I missed having a strict schedule where I can feel like I'm a part of a routine again. What I mean is working from home meant basically waking up from my bed, getting up and then coming to my desk and just working for like an hour or two and then being like, all right, I did some work, let's watch YouTube, and then getting distracted for like three hours of watching YouTube, then work one more hour, get really tired or feel a burnout or whatever the reason might be, maybe not even being able to socialize with people and talk to people face to face. I mean, calling people is not always enough, you know what I mean? Like you do wanna see some people face to face and that's not the people you live with. That's what's important. And basically after having done like two or three hours worth of work, I would realize that the time is now 8 p.m. and I have to go out because my friends are calling or, you know, many more distractions to come along. <laughs> basically, there was no organization whatsoever. What I tell people when they ask me how it is to work from home and if they should do it or not do it, I always tell them, first and foremost, you should try it because then you'll be able to better relate to what I'm saying right now. But if you wanna be able to socialize eat healthy, live healthy, and actually see new people and meet them and talk to creative people like yourself, you should be working from outside. I'm not gonna necessarily say an office because maybe you don't wanna rent an office or maybe you don't work for a company, you just work on your own game. You can work from home or remote at least, but try working from outside. Even a library or a cafe works. Basically, I think the lesson here is don't turn your home into your office and do not sleep and wake up in your own office. It's just not healthy. For a long term, it's not healthy. Like for instance, now that I work for Unity, I have some days where I feel a little bit sick, but I don't wanna take a sick day off. And I can be like, all right, I'm gonna work from home because I have a YouTube video that I wanna make for Saiku. And then I have a video for Unity that I wanna make. So I'm just gonna work from home and just get everything ready um, instead of going out and feeling ill in two hours. And that's good, that's nice. But sitting at home for four months and working from there, when there is you know a bunch of other people outside you could meet what's the purpose moving on to topic number two i just want to say this first and foremost game development is huge i mean massive huge like massive massive huge literally there are branches sub branches sub sub branches <laughs> and sub branches to those sub branches so it's massive like if you tell people you're a designer it's kind of a vague description of what you do as a as for like in games because they're gonna be like, do you design environments? Do you design levels? Do you design games, characters, 3D art, 2D art? Like, what are you designing? It's very important to understand what you like, but also what you don't like. For instance, I started programming when I was 12 years old, which also fired up my game development journey. I loved programming, and I still do love programming. I still do it every now and then, you know, whenever pro projects require it, or my video is like about a tutorial on coding, C Sharp, whatever. I do it, and I love it but it's not necessarily something that I wanna do for a full-time job. But when I was getting started with it, I thought that it was exactly what I wanted to do for a full-time job when I grew up. I was like, yep, I wanna sit in an office nine to five, I'm fine programming. But it's not really what I, what my passion lies in. Now, in order to develop on this a little bit further, I wanna move on to topic number three without wasting any more time, which is making small projects versus big projects when you're just getting started with game development. When you get started with game development, you'll have two types of people in your life. One, those who tell you that you should make your big project, your dream game right off the bat when you're just getting into it. And the other type of people who I actually belong to, that group, um, will tell you to make smaller projects as you're getting started. Now, the first group of people who tell you to chase your dreams right off the bat, they're not wrong. I'm not gonna argue that they're wrong, but they are wrong. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it is motivating to reach for your dreams right off the bat. So they're not lying, they're not wrong, like they're not, you know, incorrect with what they say. But making small projects also lets you feel more of an accomplishment feeling where you can see, okay, so I made five games or prototypes or five characters or, you know what I mean? Like a bunch of different things. I just made an X number of that in two months, a year or two years maybe, you know what I mean? And I feel like that is more motivating than sitting on your chair and just being like, all right, let me get into this super huge, massive RPG game that I've always wanted to make. That's probably gonna take me like eight years to make. And like I said before, game development is huge and I really do suggest you find out and figure out 
what you like the most so you can specialize in that field which requires you to jump from one game or one project to another project so you can try multiple different things but in a short span of time psychologically speaking i think starting off with baby steps and just making small projects means more accomplishment and success rate which also motivate you more to do more if i'm gonna be honest this is not just me saying this i literally talked to so many different people at unity in game development and through my youtube friends basically like other content creators and so far, literally everybody has agreed with me on this. But it's usually online that you'll find people suggesting you to go with your big project first. But personally, I just disagree with that. Moving on to another topic, sometimes you may, and actually I can go as far as saying you will, feel loss of motivation and burnout through game development, especially on your own projects. It is very common for some, some game developers to think you know, four months into a project being like, oh man, my project isn't looking as good as I wanted it to. I have this other idea that I really want to develop and I just want to jump onto this and my friend is making this, should I help him, whatnot. In those times, what's important to keep in your mind is the fact that you live with this project. And I mean, if you work, let's say five hours a day on this project, that makes about 25 hours a week just the weekdays so you're spending many hours upon many hours on this project alone seeing it every day and after some time it, it gets a little boring if you have a super cool wallpaper on your ipad iphone or phone <laughs> i i've recently gone to the ipad or the apple ecosystem realm so i'm just like if you have your iphone apple apple products <laughs> but like if you have your if you have a super cool wallpaper on your desktop on your computer or mac <laughs> after seeing it the 200th time it's gonna get a little dull it's not gonna be as exciting or as nice looking or as good looking as the first time you saw it and the same thing goes for your own projects if you play your game 200 times in a month just to test and make sure everything is good you're gonna feel like it's getting a little bit boring because you've been playing it for so long. So in these times, it's very important to have somebody around you who can give you, or even some people around you, who can give you honest feedback. And don't ask your mom, okay? I, <laughs> mom, I'm sorry, but disclaimer. <laughs> mom, first and foremost, I would like to apologize to you for what I'm about to say, but do not ask your mom, she's not honest. Your parents are not gonna tell you that your game doesn't look good in a specific way usually they're gonna be like, oh my god, this looks amazing. And, you know, if they say that, it, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means you're not really necessarily getting the honest feedback you probably are looking for. By an honest feedback, I don't mean that they should shove your game into the ground. <laughs> but basically tell you what's good, but also what's bad or what's wrong in their opinions, in their mind. And that's also why it's important for you to have multiple people so they can either confirm or debunk the idea that the other person gave up. See this as a beta testing phase, but also it's not just real life friends you need for that. <laughs> oh my God, that sounded so depressing. <laughs> if you don't have real time friends, real time, oh my God, I just called them real time friends. Ah, I'm so done. Real life friends. I, I mean, you don't only need the feedback from real life people, um, you could even post a YouTube video on a, like a game development journey or like a game devlog. Go on Twitter, share some screenshots and go on forums. Like if you're making your game with Unity, go on Unity forums, share a screenshot and be like, yo guys, what do you think of this game? Like it's, you know, it's been in development for X amount of months or weeks. I want to improve. I'm losing hope. You can be very honest about this stuff too. Like if you're losing hope and if you're feeling you're like you're burning out, you can approach people with that idea and be like, listen, I'm feeling a little bit of a burned out. I don't know if I should let this go. What do you think? Like, what do you think of this project? Because if you're talking to game developers, it's, it's a very relatable, common topic that everybody in game development feels. And I think other branches have this too. I mean, it's, it's very easy to burn out from certain things. Um, but especially game development, because like I said, if you work on a project, you live with that project for many months. I also have some other videos on this channel, such as running game development and, uh, you know, full-time job or a school at the same time, which I'm going to link in the description. I also have some more tips and tricks videos or topic videos, commentary videos like this one, where I talk about becoming more organized with your game development journey, how you can do marketing, how you can make more money off of your games and stuff like that. So I'm going to link all of those in the description box of this video in order to save time and also skip avoid re 
repeating myself. But at the same time, I do want to hear from you if you have any suggestions on what I should make next. Like if you have any questions that I did not answer in this video, let me know in the comments and I can make a video out of that too. Because basically these, like I said before in this video, this video is like a compilation of the most important lessons that I learned in my opinion, right? I think these were the most important for me. But if you have something specific in your mind, let me know. I can also make something on that. So that is going to be pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more videos like this one, make sure to smash like on this video and hit subscribe to stay up to tune for new content. Also, make sure to join our Discord server by going to the link in the description, which is basically a game development server with over 17,000 people in there who you can talk to and discuss your projects and receive help or even ask me for help. So, you know, it's a lot of people, including me. <laughs> also, thank you so much, Hemacrest and Donald McLean for joining the notification squad. You guys are true Psycho fans. Also, special thanks to Bill for coming up with these duck name ideas for this little guy right here. Guys, I like the Psycho Jr. name, but I'm not sure. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any suggestions for names for this guy, let us know. He's gonna be calling out the sponsors from now on, so we need a name for him. Anyway, so thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the comment section, so have a good night, and peace out.